Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will discuss beta elimination. We started discussing in the last class about the beta elimination. Beta elimination as you have learned by now, it is a microscopic reverse of the beta migratory insertion and we have also seen that the intermediate that involves or you know this is a four center reaction mechanism that involves this, this reaction. Now, beta elimination let us try to look back one more time. This is again the microscopic reverse of the beta migratory insertion. Beta elimination involve the metal alkyl species for example, the hydride being, uh, being the major one or the primary one and the alkyl over here is less likely although, although it is possible alkyl is usually less likely and we have uh, very good examples of, of the hydride example hydride complexes. If this is n electron, this is going to be n plus 2 electron complex. Beta alkyl elimination, uh, let me write that down because that is uh, you know um, it is very uh, e usual question, usual question by, by the student. It is also known, but, but less common. Okay. Let us put it that way, that is easier to remember. Now, <coughs> You know, one thing we can try to discuss then what would be the, the preferred geometry, what, what in what scenario this beta hydride elimination will be favored. Of course, I tried to tell you that the beta hydride elimination is so common that it can be nuisance, it can create trouble for a desired another reaction, right. You have a beta alkyl, inter, you have an alkyl intermediate, if beta hydride elimination becomes facile too facile, other reaction which you may be expecting with the alkyl may not be occurring that, that easily. So, beta hydride elimination product gives you a lot of trouble. In fact, a number of cross coupling reactions suffers due to the fact that uh, this alkyl intermediate will undergo the beta hydride elimination. So, desired cross coupling reaction becomes extremely problematic. Okay. And that is what why one of the reason that sp3 carbon center, that alkyl center, sp3 center, uh, carbon uh, different carbon carbon, carbon heteroatom other bond formation uh, becomes bit of an issue. I mean it is it is more than an issue, it is it is something remained as still challenging after 3, 4 decades of research on this on this field uh, involving cross coupling reactions. We might will uh, discuss that on a different forum, but uh, mainly let me try to put you uh, the idea of a geometrical preference. How can you determine what type of geometry will be preferred and what could be one of the example for such cases. Geometrical preferences, right. The example we are going to briefly discuss is let us say you have a platinum complex with two ligands and then you have an alkyl species like that where it is an open chain uh, species and beta hydride elimination and subsequent then reductive elimination will give you the product this one plus if you do it correctly you will realize that this is going to be the other product right. So, what will happen that this is alpha, this is beta from beta let us say for example, beta this hydride uh, it comes to the here. So, olefin coordinated with the hydride as you are trying to discuss remember let me show you one more time if you have forget. So, if you have a metal alkyl species exactly species and metal olefin and the hydride intermediate in this case we have an alkyl extra. So, that alkyl let us say is over here. Now, you have metal hydride olefin and then alkyl. Now, this two will reductively eliminate and this olefin will also fall off from the intermediate. So, overall for this platinum complex as you see it is a di 1, 2, 3, 4 di butyl complex beta hydride elimination and then reductive elimination will give you an olefin 
and then long chain alkane species. Now, that is good if you have another reaction which is let us say of similar type, but in this case you have certain certain strain in there and uh, you know of course, you have these are hydrogen uh, and then the thing is of course, you are going to get the products beta hydride elimination product. Now, in these two cases where you have an open chain starting material dialkyl or di n butyl starting material and in another case you have the cyclic intermediate where uh, you know you have the four member intermediate that means over here you are expecting a four member intermediate 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 member intermediate actually in this case it, it is strain for beta hydride elimination right. So, overall what you, you will see that uh, this four member intermediate one is strained and therefore, it is very very slow to undergo beta hydride elimination because you know you are not going to get that reaction. Uh, the first one where the, uh, the a dialkyl group is there and it is going to be very facile and there is no strain involved. So, the, it is going to be very easy to deal with the other one the second one since there is a strain involved that four center intermediate formation becomes very very difficult. So, the relative rate if you want to put at relative rate for this reaction k relative for this reaction would be something like 10 to the power 4 versus 1. So, uh, that that emphasize quite a lot of difference uh, of the relative rate and uh, that is how we would like to call that in a strain situation in a strain situation we will have a very slow beta migratory insertion, but in a normal very easy situation that beta hydride elimination is going to be faster once again that is one of the problem rather than a good thing for a lot of cross coupling reaction. Of course, this is a facile reaction it becomes a nuisance it creates a lot of side reaction and uh, we will see why it might further complicate in the next example. The next example we will try to see a very beautiful elegant example which is discussing about the beta hydride uh, beta migratory insertion and beta migratory insertion migratory insertion and elimination occurring in, in together in one of the example and how beautifully it can uh, give you the value of this beta migratory insertion and elimination. So, application of beta migratory insertion and beta elimination reaction. So, we will deal with the Schwarz reagent in this case that will be the application of beta migratory insertion and beta elimination beta elimination of course, and this should be about all about olefin isomerization. Okay. So, what what happen is uh, you start with a organometallic intermediate okay. and uh, you know in this particular case we will be able to see with, with Schwarz reagent particularly zirconium reagent you will see uh, it is a metal hydride reagent and then no matter what olefin you take whether it is intern terminal olefin, internal olefin double bond is at the uh, 2 3 position or 4 5 position eventually eventually you end up getting exactly the same product that is quite a lot and I mean you know it is very interesting it does not depend on the type of olefin you are taking the metal alkyl species that you are going to get is exactly same in this case type of olefin I mean that the isomers of olefin you have a terminal olefin okay, let us say C n H n H x. Now, another olefin with the same C n H x, but the double bond is now shifted to the beta and gamma position between uh, between carb beta carbon and the two second carbon and the third carbon and then another one between let us say fourth and fifth another one between fifth and sixth all different olefin with the double bond at different position okay exactly same molecular formula same long chain alkene okay but the double bond position is shifting all of them will give you the exactly same product 
that is quite interesting and that I guess is a very beautiful and elegant example uh, for this beta migratory insertion and beta elimination reaction. Let us try to look at the uh, cyclopentadienyl zirconium this complex also known as very popularly known as a Schwarz reagent. This is by the way done by one of the undergraduate student at MIT. In any case this is let us say you have one of the olefin like this. You can have another olefin like that of course, another olefin as you can draw from the same uh, thing is this right. Overall what you have is a for all these cases you have Cp2 zirconium chloro starting with this complex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this uh, zirconium hex, uh, hexa, uh, hexyl complex in hexyl complex you are going to get. So, irrespective of those all the olefin that we have drawn, we have drawn three different olefin in this case with six carbon. The double bond position is shifting one is a terminal then the internal further internal and so on all the complexes you, you are going to get exactly same product that is quite amazing right. Uh, no matter which olefin you take exactly same product is getting. So, this is a thermodynamic complex it is a stable complex irrespective of the positioning of the olefin we are going to get it. Now of course, you have uh, you have uh, understood why it is happening that is because the it is a primary one as we tr already tried to discuss this primary alkyl species is more stable compared to the secondary one and of course, compared to the tertiary one secondary is more preferred over the tertiary one, but how exactly that is happening let us try to look at. Of course, we have this example where we have again different olefin three different olefin giving exactly same product this is this is the thermodynamic product this is the thermodynamic product of course product since this is the primary okay since this is primary and primary is more stable now how it is exactly happening let's try to draw the um, this schwarz reagent one more time so this is your Schwartz reagents and starting from this one if you let us say take of course, the first terminal olefin one you know how it is happening how you can explain, but uh, with, with the with the secondary one let us say try to take Cp2 zirconium H and Cl the olefin will coordinate let us say here over here methyl. Now, here first step would be the beta migratory insertion right beta migratory insertion you will get Cp2 zirconium chloro with a intermediate where this is forming and from there on again further here you can see that this is the most important thing to note. So, this is beta migratory insertion right. So, at the at the alpha position at the beta position you have the hydride this hydride is getting involved right this this is alpha position this is the position this is the beta position in this case after product formation at the beta position hydride is going on. So, that is the beta migratory insertion that is happening. Now, if you look at from this intermediate of course, this is alpha this is beta, but of course, this is also another beta if you look at this product this is alpha this is beta. Now, from here as you have seen in the previous uh, general ex example this is also a beta position from this beta position you can have the beta hydride elimination right. So, beta hydrogen elimination particularly from this hydride from here this methyl right and overall you are getting Cp2 zirconium and this intermediate of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 one more carbon will be there and this this intermediate where you have again uh, the opposite the other beta one not from this one from this one due to the thermodynamic preference you will get that one and uh, what you overall see is then irrespective of the 
starting material irrespective of the olefin positioning you are able to transfer the bond from an internal to a terminal product right so that is i guess it's literally very uh, amazing so starting from an internal olefin you are able to convert the internal olefin into the terminal olefin anywhere that double bond is there olefin is there that olefinic double bond can be taken at the end or the terminal position as soon as you have that you have a very stable uh, metal alkyl species so let's let's look at that product formation from there on of course you are going to have the same product that is cp2 zirconium chloro and beta migratory insertion in this case 1 2 3 4 5 6 right beta migratory insertion you are going to going to get from there on so beta migratory insertion will occur to give you the same product remember from the, from the internal olefin you get a terminal olefin and then you get the uh, this primary alkyl so of course the primary olefin itself will give the same product the in internal olefin also giving the same product <coughs> now that that having said that you you have perhaps realized that it irrespective of the double bond position you have the possibility of getting the more preferred metal alkyl species because the double bond can be isomerized that is how actually double bond isomerization occurs this is a, uh, there are a lot of example in the literature uh, sometime it is called the zipper reaction I mean zip you, you just zip and zip uh, this reaction you, you can you can see a, a lot of example example with these with these cases right. Now, we will we'll particularly then try to tell you that, that it is possible to generalize this reactivity pattern and the pattern is very simple as we, we have discussed earlier. Pattern is primary is more uh, stable than secondary and then tertiary. Of course, let us try to write down in terms of more of the olefin. We have the generalization. The stability is very simply as we try to say metal primary this is a primary one okay, is more stable than metal secondary this is the secondary you have secondary and you have metal alkyl species that is over here. So, both this is both kinetic and thermodynamic product kinetic and thermodynamic stability thermodynamic mixed stability both kinetic and thermodynamic stability rates of insertion if you see rates of insertion of course uh, I think it is uh, no brainer you would understand that of course the non substituted one is more stable uh, more or uh, the faster one and then the mono substituted one and then di substituted one then of course tri substituted one and finally tetra substituted one due to the steric region further steric region as you would understand it is it is going to be very very uh, less stable so the the unsubstituted one like ethylene will be the most reactive then the then the mono substituted one then di substituted one then tri substituted one and then finally the tetra substituted one right now that that would be a, a, the all for this uh, beta migratory insertion and uh, beta migratory elimination or beta elimination in general beta elimination now we would like to then of course the other type of reaction that exist over there uh, where you do not have a migratory group associated with the metal and but you end up getting almost the same product or exactly actually the uh, same result in terms of let us say olefin uh, product formation. Now it, it could also happen uh, that that is what I am trying to say that it, it could also happen that uh, that migrating this beta migratory insertion or let us say beta migratory elimination specifically elimination reaction this elimination step where the metal hydride is forming or metal alkyl could possibly form this alkyl group may or may not bind with the metal center and therefore 
what you have left up with is the net result and that is net result is the one where you have the olefin coordinated with the metal center, but that hydride is missing in the in the in the alpha alpha elimination or beta elimination both the cases you have seen that let us say alpha hydride elimination or beta hydride elimination you have seen the hydride is attached or associated with the metal center upon elimination, but it could also possible that hydride could directly come out. Of course, these examples are not that very common, but it is feasible it exists there where the hydride intermediate does not form due to a reason that there is no possibility of forming those are the reaction we call is abstraction it abstracts directly. So, now I think in this category we would like to discuss alpha abstraction we know the alpha elimination where the hydride gets associated and the beta abstraction that is the uh, that is the one where uh, the beta migratory uh, that beta group will not be associated with the metal center after, after the reaction it will be directly abstracted right. Of course, how are you going to differentiate we will try to look at that let us try to discuss the alpha abstraction briefly today and we will we'll then move to the next class. So, alpha abstraction and beta abstraction that is what the topic we would like to discuss. Again these it is extremely crucial to understand that there is a subtle difference what is the alpha abstraction alpha abstraction you have a metal let us say R alkyl it could be hydride as well ok. okay. Now, this metal is taking and giving directly let us say this is as base right directly you have a metal carbene species plus R H no change in electron count as you can see no change in electron count if this one was n electron it will be also n electron just to remind you about the alpha elimination it is important just to really get the feeling of it uh, you have let us say metal the same type of species m h over there if you have this compound the beta uh, sorry alpha elimination will give you the product where the same exactly same exactly same product you are going to get but this carbene product that comes with the hydride in this case. So, this alpha hydride alpha position hydride is moving to metal in this case in this case there is no association of the hydride with the metal center. So, it directly comes out as the R H. So, there as you can see there is a very subtle difference between this alpha abstraction and alpha elimination you have seen the example. Now, we will we'll like to discuss in the next class how this example will construct a very uh, good mechanistic view or why we would like to uh, I mean why this beta abstraction or alpha abstraction is feasible why their elimination and uh, you know alpha elimination and beta elimination cannot happen in certain case. So, that will be discussed in the next class till then you guys keep on reading and uh, send, send us the question that you may have. Thank you very much. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.